All right. In this video, we're going to go from the standard form of a quadratic and convert that into its associated vertex form. So to remind you, standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c. Some number times x squared plus some number times x plus a third number. And vertex form is a times x minus h squared plus k. So the first thing to notice is that I've got an a in both the standard and the vertex form. In both forms, the a's are the same. So the a in standard form is going to have the exact same value as it will in its vertex form, and vice versa. Then we just need to deal with how to find h and how to find k. Well, if you take calculus, you will learn where this formula comes from. But for now, we just have to memorize that the x-coordinate of the vertex is simply minus b over 2a. So h, being the x-coordinate of the vertex, is minus b over 2 times a. And then k, the y-coordinate of the vertex, is simply the y-coordinate at h. So you just plug in h in for x, and whatever you get out, that's your value for k. So let's take a look at an example. So if we look at something like 36, where we have y being defined as x squared plus 8x plus 13. And 36 is on page 162. Part A of 36 asks us to determine whether the graph opens upwards or opens downwards. And if you remember, we talked about that in the first video for section 2.1. That's determined solely on A. And in this case, we don't have a number multiplying x squared. So if you don't have a number, you can always fill in the blank with 1, because 1 times x squared is just x squared. We haven't changed the formula at all. So if you don't see it, A can always be 1. Now, the thing that determined whether it opened up or opened down was whether or not A was positive or A is negative. And in this case, A is positive. It's greater than 0. So that means the graph opens upwards. So that's going to be the basic shape of our graph. And that's the answer to part A. Now, part B of this problem asks us to find the vertex, which is where we're going to be using these formulas for h and k in terms of the standard form. So our answer for the vertex should be a point, because that's what the vertex is. The vertex is a point, which we call h comma k. We call the x-coordinate h and the y-coordinate k. So we're going to need to find two numbers to satisfy the answer for b. And looking over here, we said that h was minus b over 2 times a. And looking back at our original formula for 36, b is 8. b is the number that multiplies x. Don't include any x's with these. A, a 
B, and C should just be numbers. There should not be any x's. You know, A should not be 1x squared. B should not be 8x. A, B, and C should all be just numbers. They shouldn't have anything to do with x. And A, we already saw before, is equal to 1. So 2 times 1 is 2, and 8 over 2 is 4. So the x-coordinate of the vertex is minus 4. Our first number here is minus 4. Our second number we're going to get by plugging minus 4 in for x into this formula here. So k is going to be the result of plugging minus 4 into y. So that means we're going to take minus 4 squared, add that to 8 times, now not x, but minus 4, and then add 13 to the result. And whatever we get out of this will be our second number. It'll be the y-coordinate of the vertex. Minus 4 squared is 16. 8 times minus 4, I believe, is a minus 32. And 13 just stays 13 for the moment. 16 minus 32 is a minus 16. And then we add 13 to that to get minus 3. So our vertex is the point minus 4, comma, minus 3. And since this opens up, this vertex will be a minimum. Because the graph opens up, this is a min. That's important for the next block of questions, but for now, all they're asking us is to find the vertex. Part C asks for the axis of symmetry. Now, once you have the vertex, the axis of symmetry is very easy. It's just x equals the x-coordinate. So the axis of symmetry is simply x equals minus 4. x equals h in other words. And since we already know H, we don't have to do any more work. So this is the vertical line about which the parabola is mirrored. Now if we look at part D, we're going to get into the x-intercepts and y-intercepts and then get to graphing the parabola in part E. Well, we haven't really talked about the quadratic formula, which is necessary to find the intercepts just from the standard form. So we don't know at the moment how to solve for the x-intercepts of this equation. But we do know believe it or not, how to solve for the x-intercepts of this equation. This is the vertex form. It's a times x minus h squared plus k. And h is a minus 4, k is a minus 3, and plus a minus is just uh, subtraction. So it turns out that using the, not only does the vertex form tell you what the vertex is, a nice property of a parabola, but it also makes it very easy to solve for the x-intercepts. To find the x-intercepts, we set y equal to zero and solve for x. So, letting y be 0, 
1 times anything is just itself, so this is minus a minus becomes plus, so squaring x plus 4, and then subtracting 3. In this case, the way to solve this is to simply isolate the square. So if we add 3 to both sides, we get that x plus 4 squared is equal to 3. Then taking square roots of both sides, and don't forget your plus or minus, taking square roots of the right hand side gets rid of the square. So we're just left with x plus 4 on the right, and on the left we have to take square roots just like we did with the right, so we take square roots to the left hand side and get th square root of 3 with the plus or minus of course. Now we just have to isolate x, which means we have to get rid of the plus 4. So subtract 4 from both sides and we get the following as our x-intercepts. We have two x-intercepts. One of them is minus 4 plus the square root of 3. The other one is minus 4 minus the square root of 3. So these are our x-intercepts. For the y-intercepts, you set x equal to 0 and solve for y. And in this case, it's actually easier to look at the standard form. There's nothing wrong with plugging 0 in to the vertex form, but the standard form is a lot easier. So, plugging 0 in for x into the standard form, so I'm looking at this top formula here, so it's 0 squared plus 8 times 0 plus 13. Well, 0 squared is 0. 8 times 0 is 0. And we have 0 plus 0 plus 13, which is just 13. So 13 is our y-intercept. And for part E of this problem, if we're going to graph, let's see, what was the important information we had? We had the vertex was at minus 4, minus 3. So we're going to need room for that point. Just computing what the x-intercepts are going to be. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 to the left, and 3 down. There's our vertex. Everything's going to open upwards, going to go up from here. So one of our x-intercepts, minus 4 minus square root of 3, that's about minus 5.7. So there's minus 5, there's minus 6, so the x-intercept is going to be about a little closer to minus 6 than minus 5. Then our other intercept, minus 4 plus square root of 3, if I plug this into my calculator, I'm going to get uh, minus 2.3 about. So that's to the left of minus 2, but closer to minus 2 than to minus 3. So something like this. And we'll have a y-intercept of 13, which is going to be way up there, so that's just off the charts there. I'll just label it here, saying that the y-intercept is y equals 13. I'll label the vertex as minus 4, minus 3, and the x-intercepts, minus 4, minus square root of 3, comma, 0, and minus 4, plus square root of 3,
comma zero. Because remember, with our x-intercepts, we had y being zero, and these were the x's that resulted. So when x is either of these two values, y should be equal to zero. So roughly, this is the sketch of our parabola.